welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon, and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. When my daughter was an infant, I found a lump on my neck. No, it wasn't that big. It was, say, half the size of a pea, but to me, it was enormous. And although I wasn't originally that concerned about it, over time when it didn't go away, I started being very fearful. I was afraid. You know, I you'll be shocked to hear this. And besides, I mean, sorry, instead of seeing a doctor, I diagnosed myself. I went online, I put my symptoms in, and guess what? It was cancer. It was definitely cancer that there was no other solution. I was going to die. You know, and it wasn't even just that I had cancer. It was advanced cancer because it was on my neck. I assumed oh, it must be a lymph node. Oh my gosh, the cancer is already in my lymph nodes. Where is it? Where is it in my body? Well, if you watch my channel regularly, you know that my daughter, the infant, is now 20 years old. I did not have cancer. I've never had cancer and God willing, I never will, but it, it wasn't an issue. I'm still alive. Everybody's okay. Joe calls fear false evidence appearing real. And he's very good with other people telling them that. But of course, when it comes to himself, it, it's different. It's always different when it's us. You know, other people, you know, bad things don't happen to them the way they happen to me. That's what all of us think. We just think that it just, there's something about believing the worst for yourself and the best for everybody else. What I want to talk about in today's video though, is that you can get through the worst crises of your life and survive and thrive. It's not the end when you have a fear. Even if something bad happened, you can get through it. Joe and I have been through so much. Oh my gosh, you guys, our worst fears over and over and over again, just in the last few years. You guys know, if you watch my channel, I lost my house. Losing my house was at the time my absolute worst fear. It was so bad. Just the thought of it. I, I stayed with my ex for two years, so I wouldn't lose my house. I wanted that house, that house. I was gripping onto that house so tightly. You guys, I thought I was going to die if I lost my house. And I know some of you might be thinking, Oh, come on, Sharon. It's just a house. It can't be that important. It was to me. It was when I lost that house, you guys, when I drove away from that house, I, I thought I was going to die. Like it, it was horrible, but you know what? I'm alive. I still miss my house, but I'm alive. I made it through. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about the worst thing that has ever happened to me and how I made it through. And you can too. If you are with a narcissist right now and you think I can never leave, I can't leave. You know, Sharon can leave, Joe can leave, you know, whoever else can leave, but not for me. It's different for me. It isn't different for you. I believed that I could never leave my ex. Just, I could not. It just, it was impossible. You know, I had this extenuating circumstance or that extenuating circumstance. Joe thought it too. We made it through. No, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying you can get through your worst nightmares and survive. I enjoy learning different languages and my favorite language to learn that I've learned is Hebrew. I really enjoy Hebrew. And one of the things I like about Hebrew, my favorite thing about it is that the Hebrew words, there's, when you, when you learn Hebrew, the definition tells you so much more than just a translation. So I'm going to give you an example right now. If you look at Psalm 84, verse six, it says, as they pass through the Valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. So the Hebrew word for, for weeping is Baca. So if you don't know that, it's hard to understand this. So you pass through the weeping, but it turned, but you make it a spring. Essentially, you might have to pass through a time of weeping, but you don't need to stay there. Winston, I think it's Winston Churchill. He has said that if you're walking through hell, keep going. That is my recommendation to you as well. If you're in the worst part of your life, keep going. I'm going to tell you the worst thing that ever happened to me and how I made it through to the other side. I've actually kind of like measured this, you know, kind of one hand, which is better, which is worse, which is better, narcissism or infertility. I have to say, even though both were horrible, if I had to choose the absolute worst thing that has ever happened to me, and this goes from the narcissist, losing my house, losing some animals that I've had, just thing after thing after thing. 
this is the worst infertility it was absolutely the worst and i think it was really really bad for me because i went through it with a narcissist so let's talk about going through infertility when you're married to a narcissist when i wanted to get pregnant with my daughter i got pregnant with her right away you know i wanted to be pregnant and the next month i had a positive pregnancy test I was spoiled by that and I expected the same thing to happen again. You guys know I have a daughter and she's on the channel a lot and you know she she's open and she loves to talk about stuff and I'm actually going to have her on the channel again soon but my daughter it, there's no issues there with her. It's different from my son. I don't talk you guys know I have a son but I don't talk about him that much. I don't mention his name. I really just say that I have a son who's 17. That's because he doesn't want me to and I respect that. But I want to tell you a little bit about him so you can understand what has been going on in my family. I wasn't able to get pregnant with my son very easily. Month after month after month after month, I started to become very depressed. When I cannot get pregnant with him, very depressed. To the point where I don't, I don't know if this seems like an exaggeration. I don't think so. I became almost disturbed. It was just, it, it, it forget the lump on my neck. This was a 24 seven thing. And every month when I had another negative, negative result on a pregnancy test, I went into a deep depression. At first, kind of like the lump on my neck, I wasn't that concerned. I knew that I got pregnant with Paris so easily that, you know, usually it takes longer. Six, seven, you know, once it became 12 months, that's when they recommend if you're going through infertility, if you don't get pregnant <clears throat> to see a fertility specialist. So I went to see a fertility doctor and he told me that he couldn't find anything wrong. He said, you, I don't know why you're not getting pregnant. You should be able to. And I don't know if that made it better or worse. It was like, well, why, why? So he said, you know what? We're going to do everything that we can. Ho you know, hopefully we can get you pregnant. And I did get pregnant, but two, I think it was, well, let's see, two or three months after I started fertility treatment. But I want to tell you what it was like going through infertility with the narcissist. Now, initially he was on board and he wanted to have another baby. When I couldn't get pregnant and when I started to get upset about it, he was done. You know, he, no, I don't want to anymore. I don't, uh, forget it. We have one. That's all that we need. At that point, I was past the point of no return. I just, there was, I had to have a child. So in the, to give the narcissist credit, we did keep trying. He did go to the fertility doctor with me. I mean, he did do that but he was not supportive, not even in the slightest. When I, when, when I started seeing the fertility doctor, he gave, I can't remember the name of the medication that he gave me, but it was a medication that made me ovulate like crazy. So there were essentially more targets to hit. I was already in a point of, uh, uh, guys, I was in a bad place. At my regular routine, I cried every day. If I saw somebody who was pregnant, I was gutted, devastated. Even, even me just telling you right now, I can feel it. I can feel some of that pain. It was horrible. My next door neighbor had twins during this time. And I saw her It was like, I was, I was in my backyard when she came home from the hospital with those two babies. Jealous was not the word. I was gutted. I was so upset. I would cry every night for a week after I got yet another negative test result. So here I am, I'm taking these fertility drugs. So I'm already highly emotional. You know, they recommend when you're going through infertility to see a, a psych I'm not a psychiatrist, a therapist to help you because it's extremely, extremely excruciatingly painful. I could not even consider doing that because just the thought of expressing this, talking about this, letting any of it out, I couldn't bear to think about it. I wanted to just push it down. I just wanted my baby. That's what I wanted. So I, I, I just couldn't even do that. You guys, if you know my story, my ex put me, I was like a lot of people, you know, the way I am now is not how I was with my ex. I didn't have friends. I didn't have a supportive family. My ex would tell me all the time that people didn't like me. I believed it. Now, it's like today I understand what was going on. But remember, this was my reality. This was my truth. I believed it. Just like so many of you believe it's different for me. I can't get out. You know, you can get out, but I can't. Belief is very powerful. So I could not get this out. It was just me suffering. 
At one point, so here I was, very, very upset, just devastated every month. Instead of being there for me, guys, I desperately needed somebody to be there. I needed my husband to be there. I needed to hear, it's going to be okay. Honey, I love you. It's going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Let's adopt or whatever, whatever. Or try to talk me into just having one, whatever it was. I was desperate for that. When you're with a narcissist, they always come first. He did not want to deal with me. That was, I had to deal with him with everything, but he was never going to deal with me. He was not supportive. I was on the edge. I was, like I told you, I, I wasn't okay emotionally. I was in my worst possible state. When I'm sitting here trying to think of bad things that happened to me, what is the worst? You know, I've had a lot of bad things. Losing my house, you know, having the issues with my ex, um, many animals dying. I mean, the, and these are tragic things that have happened to me. You know, Joe and I, I don't know, I think I have told this story before. When I first came to see him, I have a snake breeding business. We had an issue in the brumation. Joe's son left the garage door open, which he wasn't supposed to do. I, all my snakes were frozen. Every single one. Joe and I, we literally saw a miracle. I, mean, I know I'm kind of glossing over this. Maybe I'll talk about this with him in a video soon because this was an astounding thing. Joe and I saw animals raised to life. Every single snake was dead. Dead. And they started to come to life. We brought them in the house, put them by the fireplace. They were dead, you guys. They all came to life except for one. My best breeder passed away. So, so I lost part of my business. I haven't been able to make as much money over the last two years because this happened. These are tragedies. And, you know, there was a time, Joe and I are doing better now, but there was a time we were not okay financially. We were in a bad, bad place, but we made it through. So lots of bad things have happened, but the worst was infertility with the ex because there was nothing there. Joe is such a great person, you guys. Anytime I've ever had a problem, he's there for me. And I'm not used to that. That's not how it used to be. And when I went through this worst possible, the worst thing, this is what my ex did. So I would be crying. I'd be so upset. You know, I would be praying. I was so desperate, you guys. And my ex used to go into our daughter's room, who at the time was a toddler. And he used to speak on the baby monitor to me. So here I am in utter devastation mode laying there crying, just so desperate, you guys. I, I, can, I can feel it now, which is so horrible. And my ex used to talk on the baby monitor and say this type of thing to me. Mommy, mommy, why don't you love me? Why do you need to have another baby? Why aren't I good enough for you? I, you guys, I can't believe I made it through. And th this is part of this video. Like, I made it through. You can make it through too. I, it, was, it was horrific. And finally, when I got pregnant, I got pregnant and joy, I was so filled with joy at this pregnancy. It was, it, it, it's unexplainable joy to, to, to you. I can't even describe it to you. When I finally got pregnant, I took 12 pregnancy tests. I couldn't believe it. I was, it was just, oh, elation. Because I was seeing a fertility doctor, I went to, to see a doctor for an early ultrasound to confirm the pregnancy. And guess what? I was pregnant with three. I was pregnant with triplets. Overjoyed. It was just, it was amazing. You know, my doctor was like, oh, we might selectively reduce or whatever. And that wasn't even something I was going to think of. The, the, oh my God. Like I wanted all these children. However, there was an issue. I got the ultrasound at around five or six weeks. There was only one heartbeat. So there were three sacks. So he said three sacks, one heartbeat. So he told me that I should come back in two weeks because it was reasonable to expect that these that these other two sacks, like they, the heartbeats would start up within a couple of days. He's like, come back in two weeks and we'll know then for sure. And then he told me, if you, know, if you lose the two, he's like, you probably won't bleed. You'll probably, get this, reabsorb the fetuses. So I'm thinking to myself that whole two weeks, here I am. And I'm like, every time I went to the bathroom, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, have I absorbed those fetuses? Was, have I done that? Oh my gosh, I was, I was afraid to do anything. I was afraid I was going to hurt these children that I desperately wanted. I went back two weeks later and I was only pregnant with one. I was so upset, you guys, about losing the two. But because I had the one, I put all my focus on that. 
I was, if the doctor told me to do something, I did it. I was having this child. It was just, it was my biggest dream ever. The day I gave birth to my son was the happiest day of my life. And if you know how much I love my daughter, that is, I'm not saying anything negative about my daughter. It's because of the tragedy around this. I love my children. I love being a mom. It's, it's my favorite thing in the whole world. It's the best thing ever. But when I gave birth to that child, pure joy. There was I, just absolute, it was, there could not have been a better moment in my life. When I had that child in my arms, I sometimes say, and this doesn't mean that other people don't want their children, so don't get me wrong when I say this. I sometimes say my son was the most wanted child in the whole world. When that doctor put him in my arms, I was complete. It was just, it was, oh my gosh, you guys, it was amazing. And I remember when I came home from the hospital, it was about two days after that, I was sitting in my house at the time I lived in Massachusetts. It was just me and my child or just me and my son. And I can remember looking at this baby and he was so perfect. He, I'm looking at his long eyelashes, his soft skin, little peach fuzz on his hair. I remember touching his toes and his fingers and his little bloated belly. It was amazing. And I prayed to God right then. And I told him, God, thank you. Thank you. Because it was like he put this child right in my arms from heaven. Like he, he this child came from heaven into my arms. And I told him, I will do everything for this child, for both my children. I'm going to be the greatest mom. I promise you, I won't let you down. Today, I often think that I let him down. You know, and it's very difficult to go through. You know, it's, it's another one of my fears. I feel like I let him down because I was with the narcissist. Now I understand and, 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 and rationally I can understand there were a lot of things I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know I was putting my family in danger. I didn't know this. I didn't know my ex was a psychopath. When he started to become very dangerous, things started to change. But even then it was slowly. And I feel like, oh my gosh, I was given this gift, both my children. And did I let them down? H have I let them down? H have I destroyed their life because I was with a narcissist? That's a real fear. Joe thinks that too with his own kids. The two of us, we sit there and we talk, we talk about it all the time. We talk about what happened, if our kids are going to be okay. And, he, and Joe says to me so many times, do you think they're going to be right? Sharon, do you think? The other day I was at work and a friend of mine at work asked me, he's like, I'm pretty open with things that have happened. He said, do you worry that your kids are going to be affected by this? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. But the difference that I have, the difference compared to how I felt, you know, yesteryear or back in the day, because I've been through so much, because I've been through the infertility, losing two children, um, you know, losing my house, dealing with the issues Joe's had, you know, Joe recently, and we'll talk about this later, he had his worst nightmare come true. Some of you know, he was born with a birth defect, which made one of his ears smaller than the other. He had a surgery. Now, he had many surgeries when he was a child. I think I, it's around a dozen by the time he was 10 years old. Major, major PTSD around hospitals and all that. Finally, this is about six or seven years ago, he had a surgery that fixed it. So finally, he had, he thought he had his dream come true. Oh my gosh, I got through it. Just like, you know, I thought I, I got through it. I, I had my baby. He thought he went through it. He, he, it, it was okay. Just the other day, he had to have surgery. I mentioned it on the community page, and we talked about it in a recent video. He had to have surgery to take the implant he had in out. He he lost it. It it it, it didn't. It, it failed miserably, and he had to have it out. We had some bad bad moments about that. Joe was devastated in a way that was just it, it was inconceivable to me. That it was just you couldn't talk to him. It was just the worst thing ever. His life was over. He wasn't going to make it. And he felt that way on many other things too. You know, one of the Joe's biggest fears was losing his house to the narcissist. Fear of it, right? False evidence appearing real. He was terrified. And he told me this was actually very important in our relationship because he told me point blank, I love you, but if I lose this house, I can't be with you. I, I, I can't. I, 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 I'm never going to be the same again. I, I cannot survive it. And he meant that. At first, me said that because he said it point blank. I mean, he did tell me, "Look, if if I lose this house, our relationship's over because I can't, I can't do it. I can't be with you. I can't, I, I can't, I can't lose myself. I, I'm just, it's over." 
I didn't know how serious he was until I started to really get to know him and he was serious. Mm -hmm. These are our worst fears, our worst fears that have become reality. Now, he got his house, so his ex didn't get it, but he did have to lose the implant in his ear. He's recovering right now. He has a remarkably good attitude, but this was his worst nightmare, you guys, and he's surviving it. Losing my house has been horrific, but I'm surviving it. The ex, the divorce, my ex is still causing me problems, you guys. He's suing me for $30. Now, I'll tell you more about that later. All these things, losing the two children. You know, I tried to get pregnant again after that, and, and I, I didn't. So I, I had the two, and, I, and I'm okay. We've all made it through. You can too. The worst things that are happening in your life, guys, take it from me. Take it from Joe. Take it from the Bible, right? Baca, you have to walk through the valley of weeping, but you don't need to stay there. I want everybody who's listening to know, I wish I had had some type of confirmation that, that it was going to be all right. And it is, it is. It doesn't mean it's going to go the way that you want. But you absolutely, no doubt, can get through the worst moments in your life. And later, when you look back on it, you're going to be amazed that you made it through. And it's going to help you as you move forward to the next step. Once you've been through, and many of us have been through unbelievable tragedies, as you've been through these moments, it makes you stronger. And sometimes I think to myself, you know what, screw that. I don't want to be stronger. I want to just have my life and live my life. This is how it is. You know, bad things happen. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. But I do know from my own experience, from Joe's, from so many things I've read, from the Bible, everything, we can make it through. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. Never give up. Once you give up, it's over. But if you hold on and you, and you just stay strong, hold the course, stay strong. Think about other people, what they've been through. You can make it too. I hope this has encouraged somebody because sometimes you just need that encouragement. You just, you need something. And maybe this video is a sign for you that you can get through anything. Thank you so much for listening. I will see you guys in another video. I actually have in the next video, I have Paris is coming on the channel soon. She has super, super exciting good news that I can't wait to share with you guys. You know, and this is her too. She's been through tragedies and she's persevered. And she has something amazing to tell you guys. So stay tuned for that. It'll either be later this week or next week. I love you guys. I'm trying to get on a regular pattern here. I've been struggling, but you know what? I'm going to persevere through. So I'll see you guys soon. God bless you.